Hey guys, TSL here, back with a brand new video. In today's video, we will be continuing our How to Make a Dungeon Game on Roblox series, and in today's video, we will be adding some mob spawns. So, if you remember, in the last video, at the end of the video, I showed you guys how to like add the mob spawns into your rooms, and I showed you guys how to do it for one room, and I said that I'll finish them off camera. So yeah, I just added all the mob spawns the same way that we did in the last video, and I also added just an empty folder called mobs. And it has no attributes, no nothing, just an empty folder titled mobs. Uh, this is where all of our mobs are actually going to spawn into. And then the mob spawns are obviously just like the parts that the mobs spawn at. Alright, so I have that in every single one of these rooms. And yeah, we should be good. So the first thing I want to do is actually get a mob. So let's go to the toolbox. We'll search like ice knight or something no ice knight uh yeah we could take this why not it has 13 included scripts yeah sure i will right, grab that remove everything that's probably a virus actually might not be but we'll remove all of the scripts and like in values and stuff remove all this stuff enemy settings torso yeah, we can remove all that stuff. Remove the fire and the script. That's never a good sign. Remove this. It's in every single one of these. And, uh, interesting. Delete all of these. Delete the script. And we should be good now. We can change this. We'll say Ice Goon. And... We'll give the primary part the torso. We'll grab our welder script here. Copy that. Paste that in here. And let's go all the way to the end over here. Uh, we'll just do game.workspace. And then for model in rooms. And we'll do ice goon colon get children and then we'll click enter and it should have welded everything uh, it doesn't look like it did hold on so let's go in here let's uh, copy this and let's paste this here we'll say in game dot workspace dot ice goon colon get children model.primary part uh, oh because okay we're just supposed to we can remove this this or actually so our we have to have a local model up here you go to game.workspace.icegoon then we do this and we can do a get children for this now if we copy this, paste this into our command line, all right, it looks good now. And we can delete that from there. All right, we can close that up and we can go here. So right now you see his health is like that. Let's go to his humanoid. Max health will just set to 100. Okay, so now we have this guy and he is completely useless. He's not doing anything at all. Uh, so yeah, let's fix that. Let's insert a module script into uh, server storage our modules folder where is that right here in modules and actually instead of creating a new one we'll use our dungeon generator one so the first thing we want is we're going to want to get our mobs variable so local mobs is equal to and then let's actually let's actually make a folder in replicated storage and we'll call it mobs this will store all of our different mob types and we'll set this guy's parent in, uh, to the mobs now if we go back here we'll do rs.mobs and we can do generator dot current fighting room is going to be equal to nil uh, and this is just going to be the current like the room that the players are currently in currently fighting the enemies off in and yeah that, that should be pretty self-explanatory all right so let's now scroll down here 
uh, into here and if i equals equals one then what we're going to want to do is we're going to say our generator dot current fighting room is going to be equal to our clone then clone dot door dot destroy then we'll say generator dot spawn mobs and we'll pass in our clone and our clones mob spawns actually we don't need to do that we can just get that from our clone uh, this is a function we'll make in a little bit uh, and then we're going to say task dot spawn function so it's just going to run whatever's in here on a new thread so that if we have a loop it won't interfere with anything outside of it and we'll do a repeat task dot wait let's just do like two and we'll re repeat that way we'll repeat what goes on in here until a two number version of our st string dot split dot split generator dot current fighting room dot name comma room in the first index or actually actually the second index if it's and then let's go out here if it's greater than the number of rooms colon get children so basically we just want to keep running this until well until we're until we completed it and we're no longer until we completed all the rooms uh, and inside of this what we'll do is check or actually not check we'll have a loop we'll say for underscore comma mob in generator dot current fighting room dot mobs colon get children do so basically this underscore is saying we don't care about the index just leave it uh, and then this will be the actual mob model and we're getting every single mob inside of the mobs folder of our current room and then we'll say generator dot move mob to nearest player and we'll move the mob all right so now let's create the two functions generate spawn mobs and generate or generator dot spawn mobs and generator dot move mobs to nearest player so starting with our generator move mob to nearest player or actually we'll start with the spawn mobs so we'll say function generator generator dot spawn mobs and we'll take in our room we'll say for underscore comma spawner in room dot mob spawns colon get children do we'll say local mob name is equal to our spawner colon get attribute of our mob and the mob count equals to our spawner going get attribute of our mob count then we'll say local mob is equal to mobs colon find first child mob name and we'll say if mob then for i equals one comma mob count do so this is just making uh starting at starting index at one and ending at our mob count we will local clone equal to mob colon clone so clone the mob uh set the c frame so clone colon pivot to that's why we did the welding earlier c frame dot new spawner dot position plus vector three dot new we'll multiply four by the current index and then one comma one it's just so that they don't all spawn in each other and then clone dot parent will be equal to room dot mobs and that's it for the spawn mobs function okay now for the move mob to nearest player we'll say function generator dot move mob to nearest 
player and we'll take in a mob we'll say local mob torso is equal to mob dot primary part a local closest magnitude is going to be equal to math dot huge uh, that's the starting and then the closest player and the closest character closest player and closest character will just be no for now we'll say for underscore comma player in game colon get service players colon get players do you should make a variable for that we might do that later a local character is going to be equal to player dot character or player actually no we don't need the player colon character added i will say local character equals player dot character local torso is going to be torso it's going to be equal to char dot primary part next we'll say local mag is equal to torso dot position minus the mob torso dot position dot magnitude so this is just going to get how far we are from the player or how far the mob is from the player uh, and we will check that distance so if magnitude is less than the closest magnitude so if the uh, if the last closest player is further away than we currently are and the magnitude is also less than 30 so if we're more than 30 studs away we don't want to actually have the mob follow us uh, but if both of these are true then we set the closest player to our player the closest character to our character and the closest magnitude to our magnitude then down here outside of the for loop we will say mob torso colon set network owner and the closest player and finally we will move the actual mob so we'll do mob dot humanoid and move to closest character dot primary part dot position and closest closest character dot primary part so move to just takes in here let's see if I could get it to show you guys anyways move to just takes in the position of there the vector 3 position and then the base part so if we go ahead and we test this by clicking the play button, let it load in for a minute, and now we're in our little room here. When we click on the start button, three, two, one, start, and here you are, our mob spawn in. We could fix that little spawning, uh, that little spawning issue. But you see, we they're not actually following us because we have a little error. Attempt to index nil with primary part. So. Basically, it's saying that our character, closest character, does not exist. So, we want to make sure, here, let's put a check over here that says, if closest character, then, and, n. Now, when we click play, this should get rid of the error. It was probably the first time we ran the function, it probably since we were too far away from the mobs it didn't uh, set our closest character so it was still nil but now if we join we have our mobs here and now they follow us don't mind the z fighting in the floor try to look away from it but yeah you see they follow us uh, if you want them to follow faster what you'll actually have to do is go into the um, like actual mobs model click on their humanoid and set their walk speed faster but yeah uh next video we will actually like add weapons so that we can kill these mobs make them take damage to us and if we have time count them up so that we could go to the next room anyways guys that is it for today's video if you guys enjoyed the video and this helped you out please remember to leave a like subscribe turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one other than that guys i'll see you in the next video